I just want to read Big Swiss. I am very much looking forward to Big Swiss by Jan Began. The whole reason that I made this channel was so that hopefully one day I might get relevant enough to get an arc for Big Swiss. The possibility of me getting a Big Swiss arc. Big Swiss. It looks extremely gay, it looks extremely entertaining, and I cannot fucking wait to read it, but it only comes out in fucking February! I do not have the patience for this. I can't wait, I just want to read the book. Please! She's here. I waited until February, and not a day longer. I actually did film like an introduction on why I already have this all of a sudden. Long story short, my friend tried to pre-order this at her local bookstore, and they were like, oh, we already have it. You can just come pick it up. And I told her to get to, and I jumped on a train to come and pick it up. When I filmed that intro, I didn't like say anything about this book. I didn't say why I wanted to read it so bad. I didn't even say what it's about. I didn't even say who it's by. It's written by Jen Bagan, which I mean, you can see because this book is huge. And so everything is huge as it should be big Swiss. So let me just read you the blurb, which is something I never do because I'm terrible at reading out loud and I should stop doing it altogether. Let's try it. Big Swiss in parentheses, Flavia, 28. Dog lover, married, gynecologist, never had an orgasm in sex therapy. Greta, in parentheses, Rebecca, 45. Dog lover, newly single, audio transcriptionist for a sex therapist, bound by a confidentiality agreement, increasingly infatuated with one particular client. Big Swiss, that's Greta's nickname for her. She's tall and she's from Switzerland. Greta can see her now, dressed top to toe in white, that adorable gap between her two front teeth, her penetrating blue eyes. Well, that's how Greta imagines seeing her. They haven't actually ever met in person, nor has Greta ever actually been to Switzerland. Greta and Big Swiss are not in the same room, or even in the same building. Greta is miles away, sitting at a desk in her own house, transcribing this disembodied voice. What Greta doesn't know is that she's about to bump into Big Swiss at the local dog park. A new and not entirely honest relationship is going to be born. A relationship that will transform both of their lives. The reason I jumped on the hype train for this uh, is there a hype train yet i don't know i think there should be is because jodie coma has attained the film rights the movie rights i don't know what it's called it's not gonna be a film anyway it's, it's gonna be a tv series on hbo and so obviously ever since i found out about that i wanted to know everything about this book and i wanted to read it asap because i would move into jodie coma's ass if i could getting onto this as fast as i could was the next best thing. I think a lot of people who clicked on this video probably are wondering about the same things that I was. Y you know, what is Big Swiss like? What is Jodie's Rule gonna be like? What's the series gonna be like? You know, what's the deal? I guess that's what we're all wanting to find out. I, I have finished it at this point, so I can tell you now that it has met my expectations, period. I had a lot of them, great expectations, but also just like many expectations. Like I kind of knew what I was going into almost exactly. It was that, it was literally that. It didn't really exceed my expectations, but that wasn't necessary. Because when a book meets my high expectations, that's a five star read. That's a hard thing to do. <laughs> that's what I will say up front. Now I did make a reading vlog, so I will show you the footage that I made while I was reading this. There will be absolutely no spoilers, don't worry about it. It's just like an impression of what this book is like. And then afterwards, I will come back to talk about the message of this book, the contents, the themes, and I will also definitely go into my expectations for the series a bit more. Enjoy this weird ass little reading vlog, I guess. Good luck. All right, ignore all of this. Um, I've had a long day. It is currently February 1st, and this book is not supposed to be out yet. It actually comes out February 8th. No, I did not get sent an arc, even though I've been begging for it. I guess this is a shout out to bookstores who just ignore release dates and just start selling books as soon as they get them in stock. I'm kind of new to like reading vlogs. I've never done one. I don't really understand the concept of them like do you just watch me read a book i guess i'm not entirely sure what's interesting about that but i want to do it for this one because i have been talking about this book since the very beginning of my channel actually this book is the reason i started my channel pretty much so it only feels right if it's gonna be any book it's gonna be this one so i had a bit of a trip and on the way home i already read the first chapter 
basically this book is about perpetually horny people with dogs i love that concept i'm going to take a shower because i need one and then i'm going to read the second chapter i guess i will keep you posted hello update time i think yesterday i didn't say anything about what this book is about in the first chapter like the scene is set quite well it's about a woman in her 40s who lives in an old Dutch farmhouse. I don't know why that's relevant. I'm Dutch and I don't know what a Dutch farmhouse is. She lives with a friend who is the local weed dealer and also they have a beehive in their basement just for fun. She has a dog, obviously. The house was pretty shit and for work, Greta, that's her name. Actually, her name is Greta Work. I never heard of that last name before, but anyway, she transcribes sex therapy sessions of like a sex therapist who lives in the same town. She's basically just listening in and eavesdropping and enjoying that very much. She recognizes these people that <laughs> she's listening to their deepest, darkest secrets about. And uh, she's loving that and I'm loving it too. It's a lot of gossip. In chapter three, her entire backstory is laid out. And now I'm finally getting to the part where Big Swiss's story is delved into a bit more. The first thing that's told about Big Swiss, and this is not really a spoiler because it happens in the first chapter, is that she is literally always horny, but she can't come. So she's always frustrated. I just cannot wait to see Jodie doing whatever she plans with that. But anyway, now we're at the part where we're getting into her backstory. And tell me why Greta just meowed at something she said. Just midway through the sentence, she just goes, meow. <laughs> I guess that's the vibe we're dealing with here. Fun. How's it going? Well, it's raining in my bedroom. My fire ran out. I'm sleeping in a cabinet. LMAO. <laughs> I'm on page 103 and it's wild. Yeah, the girlies asked for unhinged. Trust me, they got it. So imagine unhinged woman, which is like what everybody's into these days. Don't think the solitary, like metropolitan kind of unhinged. No, this takes place in like a small-ish town, I think, where being unhinged is the norm. Everybody in this town is a bit insane. In like, I have to say, kind of like a millennial way, unhinged all the same. I just read the assault scene, like in the very first chapter, it's clear that something has happened to Big Swiss in the past that she doesn't really like to talk about. And I just read the part where that happened and that was it was a lot, but it was let in quite well. So like, well, it was too much, but like in a manageable way. Now I'm going to the laundromat and I'm going to read that. And I hope that the fucking doesn't like start immediately because I've heard that the fucking is also unhinged as I'm completely expecting at this point. They just met. Big Swiss's introduction was sexy. <laughs> She's had me giggling multiple times throughout this so far. I love the way that the dogs are incorporated in the story progressing. I mean, obviously, they didn't choose this cover for nothing. It's very telling. I love that because I love dogs. It kind of feels like this was written for me specifically. But yeah, anyway, they just met uh, at the dog park. They didn't fuck. Nobody's fucking at the dog park. Oh, well, actually, Loki the dogs were fucking at the dog park. But anyway, Miss... Jen Bacon is actually so funny. Like sometimes the humor is like borderline cringe, but like you have to lean into it a little bit. There is such humor in asking a gynecologist if she works with dogs. You can imagine me giggling in the laundromat in public. I'm very intrigued. They're about to go on a date, I guess. It's not really a date. They literally just met, but I'm very excited to see where this is going. Also, yeah, I'm a Ravenclaw. Don't worry about it. Okay, here's like an official attempt at like a real reading book because I just cackled at something. It's gonna be embarrassing for me. The eavesdropping aspect of it is so funny. The way that Big Swiss gets to talk about Greta. They have so much in common. Oh, 
Whoa! It already happened? I was kind of expecting that to be the climax of the book, but wait. Why did she think that? This sex therapist, he is a terrible human being. <laughs> he is so creepy. Oh, I hate him. I can't read very well with you watching me. Is that weird? I feel like you've seen it now. Okay, bye. I just read the first sex scene, if you can call it that. <laughs> People have been saying the sex scenes are wild, but that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> Took a surprising twist. It's unhinged women, but like twice, and then put them together in the same room. This is what you get. I. I'm obsessed. I'm taking a break because I feel like shit is about to go downhill and uh, I'm not ready for that yet. I want to savor it a little bit longer. Does anyone remember the show Gypsy? Problematic in several ways, but this book is kind of like that, but so much more unhinged. It's kind of like milk fed, but the people are worse. It's like that. It's like milk fed meets Gypsy, except everybody is a terrible person. There is something about dinner party scenes. All hell's breaking loose. I'm nervous, I'm scared. The girls are fighting. It's nasty. <laughs> oh my God, they are so mean. I love it. Actually, I have to take that back. I don't think the girls were fighting. I think that was foreplay. Good for them. One thing I'm worried about regarding the show is this house that Greta lives in is disgusting that's part of the charm that's what really sucks you into the universe of this book the disgusting house that is very old and has no insulation a hopeless shell of a house that used to be nice the thing is there's a lot of bugs and if there's one thing i cannot stand in tv or film bugs i really hope they leave that out but they probably won't i'm a bit scared for that the thing i just read even reading about it made me physically sick I want to throw up Loki, but Jenny Comer should be making up for that. I'll just look away. It's fine. She got me crying a little bit. You gotta love a book about dogs, but sometimes sad things happen to dogs. It's okay. I'm fairly certain he's gonna be fine. He's fine now. It's okay. But that was intense. Okay, so here I am again. It's now February 4th. Planned to finish it last night, but I had to go to work and then afterwards I was tired. So I finished it this morning. I'm still kind of pondering the ending. There was a lot to think about that I didn't really, well, I did anticipate it because there's a whole theme to the book that deserves some mauling over. And especially because like I binge read this. So it was very much in my head constantly for the past three days. I'm processing a lot. Like I mentioned before, this is like, staple unhinged women lit but the thing about this it actually kind of slaps itself on the fingers for being like that it actually takes unhingedness seriously there's actually something to it this is like the perfect balance between absurdity stoicism humor but then also mental illness and actually talking about that in like a useful way the book itself is very much about trauma it starts out with these two characters being like my trauma doesn't make me who i am but then over the course of the story they have to sort of grapple with the fact that it does and it takes work to get over that and that's necessary to change who you are i think that, that was really well done i think in other books that have like this absurd and stoic vibe to it they kind of neglect that part of the trauma of like the place where that stoicism and absurdity comes from but this is not 
weird or strange for the sake of just simply being weird or strange. The absurdity actually serves a purpose. For example, the house where Greta lives is this like run down old Dutch farmhouse. It kind of serves as a metaphor or an analogy for Greta's own instability. It's kind of interesting. I did some thinking about it, about how the house represents the mental states of the characters and what it is like to live in a house like that, how somebody could be capable of that. There's a lot of uh, interesting conversation I think to be had about that, which I can't wait for once uh, more people have read this to discuss that kind of thing. I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really well done. This is built up in a really good way. I read in an interview with Jen Bagan that it's very easy to have character development in a book where you transcribe therapy sessions. <laughs> And that's true, but like that works so well because you get so many insights. And also the therapist in this book, he is, he is an obnoxious human being. He's the worst. But to have his insight along with these two characters who are really not in the right state of mind, it was very valuable to have that like extra narrative in there. It really added a lot to the story, not just in the juicy eavesdropping aspect, although that was a lot of fun. I'm thinking of trigger warnings regarding to this book. I will say I don't think that this is a spoiler but this is very much about sexuality and trauma. Those things are not intertwined. I will just say that the trauma of neither of the characters is sexual. If that's like a thing that you were worried about you can tread safely here. There is very graphic depictions of violence. Other than that there's quite a few mentions of suicide, depression in general. Other than that I don't really think there's anything very triggering about it. So yeah, my expectations were very high, but they were definitely met. It's really good and it really would make an awesome TV series and I cannot wait for that. Let's talk about that right now. This book about a sapphic, not so much affair, they describe it themselves as a fuckfest, was bid on by 14 production houses. 14 different parties argued over who could have this book. A lesbian fuckfest. And also, I mean, there is a lot more going on, but like, imagine that 10 years ago, that would have been absolutely unthinkable. That would not have been on anybody's mind. It is absolutely insane to me how that many people were interested in this book. I honestly don't know what to say about that. I'm quite, I don't know. I think we, we talk a lot about like representation and how much of it we're getting in media these days and cinema and Hollywood, it's fucking tragic. But like TV wise, we are doing really, really well, especially if you compare it to 10 years ago. What was 10 years ago? 10 years ago, 2013, what did we have? I think we were still watching Pretty Little Liars and Grey's Anatomy at that point. Oakley was still going on. So we had like three shows, but like not even The 100 was airing yet. Can you imagine that? Like Lexa hadn't even passed through the television landscape yet. Person of Interest was happening though. That's one of my favorites. The L Word was long gone by that point. It would have been absolutely unheard of to have a book like this on television and have like people actually fighting over it. That's crazy to me. Like that's a nice thing to think about. As for Jody choosing this project specifically, I think that very much makes sense. I have read Jodie Comer's favorite books in the past. I will link the video. In there, I also talk about like how Jodie chooses or seems to be choosing her projects. She has like a common theme in her work, like we see in Prima Facie and we see in uh, The Last Jewel. She often chooses projects that have like women with traumatic experiences at the forefront of it. She really seems to like to delve into that and really depict that in a way that is real and honest and raw. Um, she is very, very, very good at that. She's a bit too good at that at some points even. There are scenes in this book that I really hope they don't put into the series because I don't want to see it. But yeah, it really makes sense why Jodie would choose this and not just because Big Swiss is into older women. That's one of her character traits. Speaking of Big Swiss herself as a character, she is referred to throughout the whole book as Big Swiss. So like, that's just, it's a titular role. The character is very interesting. <laughs> I can also definitely see why Jodie was drawn towards that. I had expectations. Uh, she is like the one thing that diverged from that. She's, she's a special one. <laughs> she's a bad bitch. Is she a good person? Is she a fun person? Not really, but is she extremely, extremely attractive? Yes. Yes, 
she is. She's, yeah, I think you have to read it to like really understand what makes her so special. Greta sometimes describes her in a way where it's like, oh yeah, it's she's just Swiss, you know, that's just how she is. And I'm like, is this a game of is she European or is she autistic? Like, okay. <laughs> Uh, she's special. Let's just put it like that. But yeah, Jodie's gonna do a fucking stellar, stellar job at that. As for Greta, Jen Bagan in that interview said that she wants Aubrey Plaza as Greta. And I read that interview before, well, I read part of that interview before I read the book. And so I saw Greta as Aubrey Plaza. And let me just tell you, it is the perfect fit. I cannot imagine anyone else playing Greta. She would be absolutely perfect. The only thing about her is that she's a bit too young. Uh, Greta's a bit older than Aubrey Plaza is, but I think, I don't know, they could make it work. There's just like this stoicism to her, but she's also kind of funny, you know? She's very self-deprecating. She really has this like, don't give a fuck attitude over her. And if there's something Aubrey Plaza can do, it's that. I've been looking for memes of April and linking them to Greta because it just, I, that's how Greta sounded in my head. I don't want to give like outright spoilers, but there's this one scene where Greta tells Big Swiss to stop acting like this. And Big Swiss is like, like what? And then Greta just says, cunty. <laughs> I need to see Aubrey Plaza calling Jodie Comer cunty on a screen. I need it in my life. And also there's a lot more that I need to see those do doing on screen. I, I, I'm honestly not sure if I'm biased about this book because I saw Aubrey Plaza and Jodie Comer getting it on in my head. Not just getting it on, but also I'm really trying not to spoil. Seeing that in my head possibly made it 10 times better, but I'm not sure. I think it was actually a really good book. I uh, would definitely recommend it. I would also recommend seeing Aubrey Plaza and Jodie Comer in front of your eyes as you're uh -huh, reading it. <sighs> that was it. I read it. Now what? I don't know what to do with my life now. I think I'm gonna let this one sink in for a bit and then uh, uh, wait at least a few hours before I read something else again. I guess I'm just gonna edit this video. So yeah, big Swiss, big recommendation. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you're tempted to read Big Swiss after all this. And if you have, please come talk to me about it because I am dying to talk about it. I have no one to talk to you about this because no one has read it yet. That is so fucking frustrating. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Have a good day and read Big Swiss. Do it. You're not going to regret it. <laughs>